take a second and just listen to like how quiet it is. All I hear is. All I hear is. <laughs> 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 Thank God for this music called heavy metal. The biggest snake pitch you've ever created. I don't, I don't know which <laughs> microphone well, I'm supposed to go to. <laughs> hey, pay attention to this, okay? This is church. This is where tens of thousands of people come to worship at the altar of heavy metal and the best to ever do it, Metallica. When it's empty, this is an alien space. When it's full, this is where Metallica belong. In Amsterdam, Ajax Stadium, day one, M72 tour. So, Zane, yeah. did you see our new toy? Oh, it's a new toy. Look at it, isn't it pretty? Isn't it a great new toy? It's a great new toy. It's awesome. Giant it, donut. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Big chocolate donut. Yeah. You know what is, it, it is? It's so clean and so beautiful looking and to see the effort that your crew put into making it feel so compact given the size of it, kind of blows me away. It's, it's almost an illusion. It, it, I know how mm. big it is, I saw the looks on your faces when you walked in. <laughs> well, yeah, 14 times around is a quarter mile. One mile. Really? It's a oh, mile. I've already put lots of miles <laughs> on it. <there. laughs> no wonder I'm more tired. Somebody, somebody said the other day that the stage that we played indoors on yeah. from 17 to 19 could fit in the snake pit. In the snake pit. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. That's it, pretty crazy. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it is beautiful to look at though like this. And um, it really drives home the fact that a lot of the power of a Metallica show is concealed and left to you to bring the power. So I think about like what I would normally see at a rock show, the presence of amplifiers, chords, all those things. I'm trying to remember when you mm. first removed that as a part of the show. Do you remember what tour it was when you started to conceal that? Yeah, it was the Black Album tour in the Snake Pit stage. Yeah. That was pretty much our first, first uh, uh, venture into going into doing something completely different with the live show. Yeah. Because we, you know, we had the Diamond sh uh, stage with the Snake Pit in the middle, yeah. but it wasn't in, in the middle of the arena. It was like two thirds set back and all the back line was underneath of us. Yeah, it's so, cool when you see it like this and you realize like just how much flexibility and movement it gives you normally you're pretty stock stand still behind a, you know a drum kit and perhaps it's going to move around in a, in a circular motion everything's moving around you you got four of these things on the stage what was the thinking behind that like, well i mean it actually does like kurt brought up and, i mean goes back to the black album was the first time where we started kind of fucking with a concept and how can we do it, do it differently. Um, and on that tour, there was a drum kit on either side. Uh, subsequently, I think on the load tour, uh, we had two stages, uh, one at either end of the arena with a drum kit on each of them. And then I think on uh, what, San Anger, we had a stage that kind of spun around, Death Magnetic, something else. I mean, we always loved, uh, toying with and fucking with the configuration mm. uh but when we've played indoors uh, we've always loved to try to be in the in the middle of the arena but then the opposite of that is when we played festivals or played stadiums or or even smaller places or whatever we'd be one end so the whole thing is always about screwing with the configuration and always trying to play in a different setup um but obviously we've never done four drum kits and uh, we've been here a few days trying to get the uh, practicals of that figured out. And uh, Jimmy, uh, my long suffering tech has put in a hell of a, yeah. a hell of a week and <laughs> he's on a, the day three of a bender sitting down in the canal district somewhere. <laughs> Figuring out how he can end his resignation exactly. to preserve the friendship. Exactly. <laughs> right, and hire four other guys. Exactly. One exactly. per kit or yeah. something. Hey, Jimmy, good hands. Jimmy, have some help. No, I don't want to have a, it's too much for me to do by myself. Well, have some help. No, I want to do it by myself. It's that whole thing. But it's, it's something to protect. It's, you know, this is the crew that's ridden with you for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I, yes. we, not enough so trenches, conversation yeah. is 
is had about the people that ensure that when you go on that stage, you get to do the best you can do without thinking about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's unsung hero work. It's very much unsung hero work. Oh. And, you know, from the first sketches of an idea of this toy, yeah. you know, uh, you know, d designing, practicality, uh, sonically, visually, how does it all come together? You know, first of all, it is about the songs, mm -hmm. portraying the songs the best they can be possible. So PA, very important. Visuals in a big place like this, very important. And obviously our comfort on a stage and the place I think we feel most comfortable is as close as possible to the audience, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this whole idea, you know, uh, our road crew, you know, they're they're hanging out in, in, in the trenches around the outside, you know? It's like, wh where do you put these guys, yeah. you know? They're right out there with the people too. So they're probably getting stuff thrown at them or asking questions. Hey, yeah. hand me one of those or whatever. Well, real hardcore fans will know who they are. Yeah, they'll know oh, who they, they do. Yeah, exactly. yeah. For sure. Chad. <laughs> Giving oh, away Chad, their own old page. chap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. But. Nice little black market for used sticks going yeah, on down the side front. Right side yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. hey. <laughs> I need to get a piece of that. <laughs> but the whole idea is to make this feel. Yeah like an arena. I still look at this and, and think, this is not a stadium. It's so crazy. It's not a stadium. And even when I walk into stadiums like this and I see everything set up before people are in it, 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 it feels intimate. It does feel big when there's people in it. And wait till we get to America because the first thing that dawned upon me was that in America where we're playing basically all NFL stadiums, the sides are tighter yeah. because an NFL field is narrower than a European football pitch. So in all the American gigs that start in August, the sides are going to be kind of where that orange That's right. line is. So there's going to be a deeper sense of intimacy with the audience because it is more like a bowl, like where a lot of the European stadiums are more like this. So I'm so happy to be here to see you guys here at the start of this tour. This feels like a, a leap forward. That's what I love about being here. Like you're about to embark on another adventure. And I think, <laughs> you know, I think about expectation. I know what we expect, the ticket holders. We want the show of our lives. We want it to be the best show of the tour every single night, right? I wonder how you've kind of been able to manage that through a lifetime of expectation, taking that really mm. seriously every night. We want the same. We want the same. We're fans too. We're the four biggest fans of Metallica in the world sitting right here. Mm. We want it to be the best for us selfishly, mm. but also for the people who support us and the family, as we call them, come here and you know, shake off, shake off the COVID or whatever they got, yeah. you know, going on in their lives to come here. You know, as, as you look out here, you see this is designed around the audience <laughs> to get an audience in the middle, on the sides and everywhere. They're a huge part of our show. Well, we are Metallica and so yeah. are you. Exactly. And that is the line. I mean, that's, that stakes it right away. And they're, uh, you know, again, we get to look at them. They're, they're, they're the show for us. They're looking at us, you know, we get to watch them do their thing and morph and change and hopefully leave happier than they came in. Definitely. So let's get inside the experience then, seeing as how we're pre-experience. That moment, the ecstasy of gold. You've heard it how many times in your life? I almost played it when you walked in here, but I don't want to give you an anxiety attack. Yeah. I mean, it would. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was on TV just a couple weeks ago. It must freak you and out. I just flipped on the TV just to have some noise You're supposed in the to be house. like, let's go! Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I and mean, it was right in that scene, you know, where Tuco's running through the graveyard and, ah, uh, oh my God. It, even just doing that, yeah. it get goosebumps, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's connected to us. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I can only imagine what the fan feels when they hear that. Well, you can hear it because we all sing it back to you. Well, you know, it's as our, our, our manager said, it's like a calling. It is. You know, when you yeah. hear that, it is. you know, it's it's revving up the engines, it you is. know, Metallica is imminent. Yeah, you're here. You're in the building. It's happened. It's a part of the experience of a fan of knowing we're about to do something here. Mm -hmm. Has that feeling changed for you? pre-show when that music plays and you know the show's about to start, is it the same sense of anxiety, excitement? Yeah, you know, it's a real mixture of emotions, but it's, it's always a huge shot of adrenaline, at least for myself. And, you know, 
I do have expectations yeah. for myself yeah. that uh, that uh, I, I need to fulfill, you know. And so, yeah, for me, just like being in the moment and being totally present and just concentrating on doing the best I can is all I can do, yeah. <laughs> you know. And yeah. it's all I ever really think about in those few moments when we're just about to walk out. It also lets you know that um, you need to be there. Like if we're in the bathroom or something, you know, <laughs> where it's just like, nah, oh, nah. damn. Yeah. You know, you start it's running. Him. Where's the Rob? Guy. It's him. Where's Rob? I know where Rob is. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> always in the bathroom. Bro, when I say it's been 20 years since we met for the part first of, time, part of the ritual. <laughs> that means it's been 20 years since you joined the band, bro. Your era is well and truly established. You can't be late for shows now, man. No, you gotta, man. You gotta, you gotta, gotta get but, it going. But that will always let you know yeah. that you need to get moving yeah the toilet yeah. flushing is part of yeah it. that's, that's part of it too i think a lot of it is um it's about leaving something behind mm. which is the day the week the month whatever you've been carrying around and freeing yourself of that as you walk to the stage and then the other thing is connecting connecting with people connecting with the other guys in the band yeah at its at its best when it really works it's a connection to each other and to the audience, breaking down those security barricades and doing away with those and becoming one. And the great thing about having the opportunity to do these type of configurations is that you maximize the potential for that connection because there's literally, mm. there's just more areas where more people can connect with band members and vice versa. Every show you strive for the best and you accept that some days are better than others, and it doesn't mean that anybody else will ever notice that. And you know, if you're playing, you know, night one here and night two here on Saturday, you know, we may have a thing or something with the monitors, or somebody has a shittier day that it's harder for them to shake off or whatever. But 99% of the people that are here will obviously not be able to know mm. the difference between you know 110% and 105% or whatever. And sometimes you can even sit there and go. Fuck, man, I'm fucking nailing it, and I'm in, you know, I'm in the most euphoric state possible. And then other days, you're kind of at 80 or 90 percent, and you're sitting there, and you're going, "Fuck, I wish I was more in it, or whatever." And then you come off stage on that show, and people go, "That's the best I've ever yeah, seen yeah, you yeah. play." Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> so right. So there's always those kind of contradictions in it. That's an important part of the process, I think, of being a musician and allowing the audience to tell you what you did, and allowing them to reflect upon you, because. The internalization of this experience, I think, can be really challenging. You know, your job is to project at all times, especially when you're performing and on stage. But to your point, if you're not feeling it, you could carry that experience away and it could really hold you down for a long time in a bad way. That's when you gotta lean into the fans. I think about those really mm -hmm. amazing moments, both on the record and in, and in shows that we've never seen, I've never seen, where the fans have done that for you. Do you think, thinking about it now, that ultimately it was, it's been the fans that have gotten you through the thought of the fans have gotten you through some of the toughest times, the desire Absolutely. to stay connected. Absolutely, and us being fans of what we do too. I don't think through COVID, through the deaths, through accidents, through broken bones, there's never been uh, a doubt in my yeah. mind that we wouldn't continue, you know? It might suck right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna push through this in some form or another your Napsters, your all of these things. Not even during There's those really things. tough personal times for you the first time around 20 years ago when you were really going through that, that first wave. We spoke about that before, but that, that wasn't a moment when you were like, is this my life? Well, there was a moment where it definitely had to be taken away to realize how, how much I care, Powerful. how much I care about it and how much we all care about that thing too. And that, that is needed at times, Yeah, you know? When you're pampered, when you're everything's fine, yeah. you know. Uh, when when something the rug gets yanked out from under you, gratitude, uh, realizing what you do have and how much you do love it, and you're gonna miss it. We don't know much else, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. We love what we do, and this is what we get to do, and be of service uh, to ourselves and the world with it. You can hear it on the new album, or you Thank can you. hear it on the new album. <laughs> you know, I saw you go coming out of lift as I was getting into a lift. And I think, uh, I was like, oh, you know, I've got 10 seconds with Lars because he's, he's on the move. And I think, I think I said something, I can't remember, you might remember, I said something like, no one can be mad at this one. <laughs> <laughs> you said that? That's thank pretty good. You. It's, it's, no, no one thank can be mad you. at this one. I, that's funny. I, I mean, the last month, uh, 
it's a variation of the question, where does that energy come from? And, and you know this, uh, I love to try to intellectualize it and try to find the answers mm. way too close to it still to, you know, need to have more time in the rear view mirror. And whether it came out of the darkness and the despair and the uncertainty of COVID, it all plays a little bit of a part in it. Um, but uh, like we've heard ourselves say over the years, uh, as long as the, uh, you know, the body parts, the, the knees, the elbows, the shoulders, the throats, everything, as long as they're capable, yeah. we still have that energy and that fire when we're playing together. And it's hard to imagine, you know, the sub conversations like, how do you, how do you still find all that energy and, and you know, the, that relentlessness when you're successful and, you know, all that horseshit they throw at you. But when the four of us are in a room together and still this time around, two or three years ago when the project started, it still feels, you take all this away, all, all this fucking away with all, the four of us are mm. just playing music. That part of it has not changed since, you know, 40 years ago when we're just like a great riff, a drum part that fits with it and we're all feeling that the possibility of where that song can take us, that has not fucking changed one iota in 40 years. That is the success. That is the success. People keep dangling in front of you like it's gonna distract you, but they're missing the point. The point of this, the success is a byproduct of that, right? right? That's what we buy into. That's what we wanna hear, right. is the four of you sounding unified and together and dialed in. And still chasing the ultimate riff. That yeah. has never died. Yeah. Yeah. And shit I've never heard before. And I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the pronunciation. And still chasing, wrong. if I may add on to what James sure. said, and still chasing some weird thing, maybe more so now than ever. And people kind of roll their eyes when I say this. You know, still chasing acceptance or still chasing fitting in or still chasing like, hey, we're still hovering on the outside and we're these like misfits and these, you know, disenfranchised musicians that don't really belong in the cool kids club yeah and people go oh you're so successful it's like yeah but 40 years later i still feel you, like i'm on the outside are you yeah. saying you want to stay on the outside or are you saying you use that as fuel to try to get on the inside that you're never going to get into by oh, the way we're still waiting for the invites the cool guys yes. club shut the, the fuck up shut the fuck up you know but i think uh, well that's what it, it feels like i think oh it's my part god of it's, the it's feeling. Part of james, feeling james you're being awfully quiet in the corner there i don't know yeah. if you buy that it's just a feeling whether it's true think, or not you know we chase that but we don't want to be in it you don't want to be no, in it no we don't no i think it's by the way care did i just tell metallica yeah. to shut the fuck up unless <laughs> i'm still sitting here on the set can i get away with that yeah you did as, we're fine with that as far as i'm concerned this is the cool guy club for me this no is doubt. the cool guy club I, I, yeah go on. about bottom line i mean uh we enjoy playing music yeah we enjoy creativity when we get in a room yeah. like when we're when, when we're up there in our zone we're like teenagers again. Yeah, yeah. And the things that these guys throw out there, I'm just laughing because I'm the new guy, but I'm sitting there laughing. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, no, it's hilarious. The, the yeah. energy mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's what's special about this is the instruments, you know, Lars gets on the drums, we get on our instruments and the ideas flow. There's no shortage of riffs, bass lines, yeah, yeah. grooves. A lot of bands, when they've been around as long as Metallica has, they can't come up with riffs. They can't, you know, they're just not inspired. Yeah. That doesn't happen here. In fact, we've got an abundance. I can't tell you how many riffs that's I so have that were, were never came, to, you know, that were never heard. Just, and that's a good thing. It's yeah. a great problem to have. There's a lot going on here creatively. And that's why I still think about the next round and 72 seasons, a badass record. Badass record. Right? Wait till you hear 73 seasons. Wait till you hear 73 <laughs> seasons, right? <laughs> 144 seasons. <laughs> you know. 17 miles a night around that fucking <laughs> <seven hour. laughs> You guys are gonna be going back to your hotel comparing your steps at the end of the yeah, night. Yeah. How many steps did you do tonight? <laughs> you gotta pick up the pace. There's, um, can someone please pronounce the, the, the last song on the record, please? In a Marauder. Thank you. That, that's a riff I've never heard. I've, I've never heard something that's that brilliantly discordantly fucking heavy, right? <laughs> like, it, that's one of my favorite riffs you've ever written on your 11th studio album. Written on Zoom, by the way. Crazy. Lars and I sitting there fiddling around trying to connect over Zoom right, you know, the Pandora's box was opened yeah. at that point. Yeah. We're bored. 
let's do some stuff. And that was one of the riffs that, that came out of that session. Um, How did you feel when you came up with it? I want the feeling. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think about it, man. No, but when you heard it, when it came out of you, were you just like, like? I, I, I was thinking, wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool. Thank you, Tony Iommi, or whoever you just, I just channeled, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, or Cliff, or whoever it is. Thank yeah. you. Or thank you, Guitar, for spitting that one out, you know? It just, it just happens. I can't explain it, and I don't want to know. You know, it come, I'm a, a messenger. I'm a, a, a vessel, vessel of yeah. riffs. Yeah. And, and Lars has the spectacular ear of, what was that? Yeah. You know? I don't know what was that. <laughs> Play it, was it back. It was special. special. I mean, from the first moment, it was special. Oh, so fucking good. I um, hear it. And it, it didn't start. Obviously, it didn't start off as a as an eleven minute song. But yeah. is that the longest it, song you've ever made? Yeah. <laughs> but it 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 wanted to keep going, and there was a feeling as the ideas continued to show up that it's like the song was calling out for now we got to take these detours and now we got to go here and this bass breakdown <laughs> oh fuck I right mean, off uh, uh, there it is <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the first time i heard that i was like i i want to like break something but then i also want to like burst into tears it was it's the weirdest the, combination of I mean, emotion and rage. It's, it's the very two emotional. strings slide up with mm -hmm. that wiggle mm -hmm. that Tony Iommi uh, like planted in my head yeah. when I was, you know, 16 years old. Just that, yeah. you know, hey, pay attention to this, okay? Yeah, but you the know? second half of that riff is where the heartbreak kicks in. It's a, it's a yeah, deep yeah, it's album. Very melancholy. Yeah. Like that riff just had a different, I hear all the riffs. And these guys are, are, are kind enough to sort of uh, let me cherry pick the ones that, yeah. you know, will turn into songs. And, and from the first time I heard that, yeah. uh, it was just like that, that sits somewhere else. I think about the words on this album, you know, I, I've always listened to what you've had to say. And we all have, M millions of us have listened to you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the truth, every single album. I feel yeah. like you fucking went there. Mm. This On this album, I said this today to a group of people I was talking to who asked me what I thought, and I said, in my life, did I ever expect James Hetfield at this point in his life to open up himself to the degree that he has? Mm. This is where most people decide, I've shown you enough, my identity is my identity, I'm going to go live the rest of my life, I'll live with my mistakes, don't ask me any fucking questions, I'm done. You There's, do the opposite. <clears throat> I'm a work in progress, buddy. I yeah, mean, <laughs> thank you, by the way. And life is a work in progress for me and for all of us. We all go through stuff. <clears throat> we all uncover things of, from our 72 seasons and we're still working through whatever. Trauma, old, new, big T, little T, whatever it may be. There's still stuff and we're all trying to, to get better uh, at navigating life. And I think the, uh, a lot of the lyrics on this record have a little more of an inkling of hope uh, in them, sprinkled in there. But only you know? in my opinion, James, because you seem to be willing to stare them in the eye. Mm. That's the hope I get. Mm. There's a lot of really heavy reflection on this record, but it's, it's, it, you don't feel lost in no, a way. It's the opposite, actually. It's acceptance. There's a, so much acceptance of where we are in our lives, where I am in my life. Um, and I can... I can fight, 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 try and change shit, change shit, change shit. At the end of the day, it's a part of me. You embrace it, you see how it works in your life, how it doesn't work. It's like having a couple people around with you all the time. It's like, hey, I know you, shut up right yeah. now, okay? You know, <laughs> yeah. let this guy talk. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's an acceptance of the voices in the head, you know, and where do they show up? Why do they show up, you know? There's so much to overthink, but just accepting them and letting them have their space and, and being, you know, allowing ourselves to be human. Allowing ourselves to be human. That's a powerful fucking thing, man. That's mm. a deep one. I think a lot of times we, as people, we, we, we find lots of different reasons to dehumanize our experiences mm. because it's really hard to face them. Do you think what life would be like if you didn't have th this and yeah. this to do it through? Because that's, right. That's your superhero power, right? Is you get to 
charge those observations and those feelings up and you get to go on stage with your boys and just pummel yeah. us with them. Yeah, uh, life would not be around. <laughs> I would yeah. be long gone, I think. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thank God for music and thank God for heavy metal. And thank God that we, we, have, we have access to it because... You know, I get these weird thoughts in the shower. I was thinking, mm. what if we, the four of us were a group of people a hundred years ago? How would we express ourselves? Mm. We'd be like a group of poets, a group of painters. You get deep in the you shower, know? Kirk. I love I this. <laughs> it's awesome. Keep going. Keep I going. Know. What soap are you using? Just, just, what soap are you smoking in there? Just a lot of caffeine. <laughs> Lots of caffeine. Lots of caffeine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just like it would have been a completely different existence for us, you know. We would probably be making like heavy poetry or something, heavy painting, I don't know, yeah. like heavy plays, you know? It. Yeah, but you heavy. Know? But heavy, <laughs> heavy. <laughs> you know, it would still be heavy. So that's my point is, thank God for this music called heavy metal. Yeah. That yeah. we all all coexist in and, and, and live our lives in and, and like draw inspiration from, you know, it really encapsulates, at least for me, so much of my inner experience, you know, ever since I was a kid, to just this moment, you know? It's why I love this music so much. It's highly emotional. It's mm -hmm. so emotional, and it, 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 it reflects the entire human experience, like, you know, enamorada, sadness, heaviness. But, you know, there's uplifting parts of that song, too, that, that bring you out, and there's contemplative parts of that song, too, you know? Thank God for heavy metal because there's other types of music where you just it's just straight. You can't go those places. But the, but the thing is, right? It's it's so funny. The thing about music is, we did such a good job as an industry of creating linear aisles, genres, experiences, and great tribalism is really important. We're gonna see that tomorrow night. Full on heavy metal tribalism, right? Mm -hmm. Metallica in yeah. full effect. Well, the song Lux Eterna. That that's exactly written about what you feel when you come in to a gig, a festival, or wherever you are. You're around like-minded people, yeah. you're suffering together, you're sharing your misery, yeah. and your excitement all at the same time. Yeah. So what light comes out of everyone's collected darkness, you know? How has the world changed for the better? What's gonna happen? What is the, I think about music now in such a weird way. I used to be one of those people who was so focused on whatever was in front of me. And now I think about every single song and the ripple it has, every single show and the ripple it has. How many thousands of people are gonna leave tomorrow night and make a different decision based on the experience they had watching Metallica's show that ultimately is gonna make the world a better place? Well, I believe that the, the, the level of connectivity that occurs at a Metallica show, it's such a high vibration. And I felt it myself when I go to other shows. When I leave a show, I, I'm, you know, and it's, it's a great show, I am like, I am high, you know, I am high. And I'm, I hope, my hope is that when we play, you know, our music brings everyone together, we all connect. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what people are looking for, is connection. And I know that you know, at some point or another, we're gonna connect with our audience and we're all gonna be like just one big entity. And that feeling right there is so special. You can't really get that from day to day. You know, you have to, you have to be a part of something big, but it's worth it because when you leave, that feeling of connectedness, you know, it could bleed into just like, you know, okay, Next day, you know, you go to the grocery store, you know, and you see someone who needs some help, you know, maybe you still have that feeling of connectiveness. And I think maybe, maturity really helps you with that. I think as you yeah. get older, you get wiser, you get to be able to... I think to, it's, yeah, it's, it, there's a, that, that ele element of, as, as Kirk is talking about connecting, there's also an element of safety in a mm. way, in that the strength in numbers thing and about the collective being together, that the, the more you're together with like-minded people, the more you can ex express yourself and feel safe within that collective, within yeah. that group. And I think, you know, when Kirk is sitting, talking about, you know, thank God for this and thank God for heavy metal and so on, and also thank God for being in, in, a, in a group, in a gang, in a band, in a collective of people that are aging mostly the same way, was mm. just that they're very comfortable with the right. aging process in itself. You know, if two guys were, you know, uh, 
being more comfortable being vulnerable and taking the mask off and expressing themselves that way and two other guys were you know chasing the fountain of youth and trying to pretend that they're yeah. still 30 years old or whatever yeah. that would that would bring a lot of internal uh, conflict but the fact that we're 40 years into this we're knocking on the door at 60 and we're comfortable with who we are at this point in our lives, yep. with the path that we've been on, the path that's ahead of us, paying the respect to the bodies, to the health, to the mental health, to the physical health, to all of it, but it's not something that's being swept under the carpet and it's pretend and, 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 and trying to be pretended away. It's a big part of, of who we are. It's certainly something that I'm incredibly proud of. It's because you're open. Yeah. There's an openness to this band now. You talked about the feeling of being high and I think about the fact that the only way you can get to that now is because you're not <laughs> you know because you're open to the elements and you're not actually distracting yourself and you're not actually putting yourself into a place where you're numbing yourself from that pressure and that of that oh, I don't know what to do with this it's true right to some degree youth is wasted on the young right when you don't have the tools to deal with the experience to be open enough to be present a lot of people are figuring that out now but man you think about all those shows you did when you were not sober and you couldn't get that close to that feeling, right? Do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I got into a, a cycle where it's just like, you know, play a show, go out, stay out all night, then wake up the next day hungover, go out on stage, sweat the hangover out on stage, mm -hmm. and then go do it again. This is my job. Yeah, but you know, there was no, no progression. You know, when I was doing that, I, I was just kind of like just staying at this one level, it, it took me a long time to notice <laughs> that I wasn't progressing, yeah. wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, over time, you notice, you take it into account, and you do what you need to do to get back on track. Yeah. And it makes all the difference in the world. Having a clear head about everything, you know, and especially on stage it makes a mountain of difference just in terms of like performance, you know, execution, everything, my own enjoyment. It's just like, it, it's like, it makes a real, real being in the moment and then allowing yourself to be in the moment. Yeah. Rather and than being present, to... absolutely being Dude. present. Yeah. How many new songs are you going to play on this tour? Figuring it out? No, we got it pretty figured out. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let Lars answer that because he's in charge of north of north of zero, <laughs> south of twelve. Um, we're uh, we're representing the new album. Uh, you know, it's been great. Uh, on Death Magnetic, we ended up playing all ten of them subsequently through the tour. On Hardwired, I think we got up to nine or ten through the tour of the twelve. Uh, we're, we're going to represent, I mean, obviously we've got the two different set lists and no repeats and all that. So there's a different kind of structure to the set list. And um, it's not often you get a chance to start on a completely, you know, blank canvas uh, and, and 40 years in just forced to reinvent it, which I think is part of the appeal of this thing for us. Also part of the daunting thing, because there are certain safety measures in there and certain sort of flags you plant that end up being cornerstones, but we're kind of throwing it all out. And um, so you'll see uh, the next couple of days, uh, but uh, it's represented well and we look forward to it. Mm -hmm. And playing those, I mean, we've been jamming those songs for the last three, four weeks and they are fun to play and they're real like, ugh. And what you were kind enough to say about the, the relentlessness and the energy and so on, I mean, it, it it's, it's definitely going to be fun the next few days to, to get them out there. And the musical language of them obviously yeah. is a true represent, representation of our current headspace. So with some of the earlier songs, when you go back to revisit them, there are some tweaks you have to make and maybe some reinterpretations that you do along the way. And they kind of morph as your headspace continues to sort of move in different places. But these songs are fresh out of the oven, obviously, yeah. and they're right in the current wheelhouse. Yeah. And so that's really, yeah. uh, that's really cool. So doing the set list and kind of being, from what you're saying, ultimately responsible for the way that the show maps out every single night. I've never asked you this, like, that, that's a heavy responsibility. Obviously, on a night when it's a great show, you can pat yourself on the back and go, man, I took my boys out and we took out 80,000 people with the perfect run. But you know, you've got a lot of songs to represent, a lot of fans to try to make, make very happy. Do you relish that, that uh, responsibility? I mean, I 
don't know if relish, but I accept it. And uh, James likes to point out I obsess over it uh, in the best of ways, of course. As and, we all do uh, about our own things. Of course. Yes. Everyone and, has obsessive um, qualities. And yeah. I, uh, I take it seriously, first of all, the fact that... Um, you know, these guys trust me enough to 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 carry that yeah. is a huge thing. So in terms of letting the team, not letting the team down, of course. But there is a, I've been doing it for a long time, yeah. basically the whole time. And, and, you know, I have tools now available. And so it becomes a combination of new album. It becomes a, a, a combination, obviously, of, of what's called the toe tapping favorites. Do you ever sit there and just crack yourself up and just draw a line through Master of Puppets just, just for five minutes just to see what it looks like? Yeah. <laughs> There is all imagine? kinds of yeah. I mean, listen. Last Battery. time, last time we yeah. uh, we did <laughs> we did, we did a whole whole run last summer where we played. Uh, Enter Sandman had always obviously lived towards the end of the yeah, set. Yeah, played down it third. In the, uh, Didn't you? We played it third all last summer, and the look <laughs> on people's faces. We come out, we say hello with Whiplash. We go into Creeping, creeping Death, death straight into Sandman, and then Sandman sh- people are like, holy <laughs> fuck, is it time to go home yeah, already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we, yeah. we going to stay? <laughs> Should we leave? Yeah, yeah. exactly. This is yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember going, I mean, I saw one of Prince's last ever shows. I was so grateful to see it. And he started with Purple Rain. And I remember feeling like I was watching the encore at the end, you mm. know, the, at the beginning. It, the whole thing was so surreal to me. And so I can understand from a fan's perspective how that just would throw you for a loop. Well, and a band perspective. It's like your body. Yeah. Body memory. Yeah. We're up there. We're playing the last song third. It's yeah. Like, Oh, are we done? You know, I got yeah. too much energy left. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it's you know the deeper cuts. Uh, we have a database that one of our great crew guys runs that have every time we played in Holland and in Amsterdam, uh, literally exists in a database. And so on all the deep cuts, we can see, you know, the holier than thou's or the leper messiahs or the whatever uh, harvest of sorrows or the trapped under ice or whatever. Moving the needle. Last time we played that deep cut in Holland was in you know 2004 or whatever. So that one we can bring out again because it hasn't been there for 20 years. So it's a balance of all these different things. Do you things. do the data thing as well? Do you go through the data and figure out like, because it's so regionally spe- specified now, do you go through and go, look, I didn't realize that that song on that album actually uh, over indexes in Holland or anything like that? Do you go uh, that deep? Not to that level. No, it's just more, like I said, it's a combination of obviously what we want to play. It's a yeah. combination of the few songs that should be played and then it's just figuring out the deeper cuts so when you play a special song then you don't end up playing that special song in that same city every time Mm. and every time we're in Holland Amsterdam is to give people the different show and so here we are at Johan Cruyff Stadium Arena last time we played at Pink Pop the time before that we played next door at the arena, um, the Zigo Dome. You know, so every time you're in there, you're playing a different place, different stage setup with a different song list. So it's always a different experience for the fans and it's always a different experience for us. So you don't fall into that autopilot thing and now it's three years later and here we are at the same stadium with the same setup and the same 16 songs and all that so it's just always trying to mix it up there's a reason why people hold hundreds of ticket stubs with metallica on them i mean your friend eddie figured it out too i mean there's a reason why he goes and sits in the stadium and writes pearl jam set list an hour before the show yeah because you know he knows that and you want to go multiple pearl jam shows you just don't know what they're gonna play yeah and we're so proud on the hardwired tour we introduced a a, a ticket called the you know black ticket uh now it's called the you know i disappear ticket and you buy that one ticket and you go to every show on the tour you get the one laminate yeah. i always joke about the one laminate you know yeah. I, I was joking with boy genius about this the other day and i was like you guys are gonna get to one laminate stage you know where it's like such a big world tour you just here's your one to give that to a fan is more precious than almost anything it's like you really are in the club now it's a crazy thing i mean you'll see tomorrow uh, around the barricades and around their you know obviously it, we're starting from scratch here but within a few shows There'll be a group of Latin Americans, there'll be a group of Europeans, there'll be some incredible people from Asia and all wonderful parts of the world that will follow us around. They'll be in the same spot, kind of in front of maybe their favorite band member, and we'll be singing James's lyrics back to him or doing the drum parts and all this type of stuff. And, and these people are insane. They go on tour with us. They really go on tour with us, and it's so beautiful Young because it's, it, it, it goes back to that safety thing that I was talking yeah. about. If I'm sitting up there, 
you know, okay, I'm out of it for a few minutes or whatever. And I look down and I see the same five. There's a guy that James is always talking about that will just drum my parts back to me. And it's oh, yeah. just like, there they are. It's, it's safety, you know. It's like, I know I'm safe because we've got... Our fans you can ask him. him. You, you can see, ask him. We have a good drummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, exactly. yeah. It'll be funny because when Lars will do a something different, or yeah. maybe maybe even make a unique mistake or unique playing part, me and the fan will look at each other like. Yeah. <laughs> and then keep going on. It's like, <laughs> next, you know, because the dude will go. Yeah. Oh, that's totally. That's yeah. hilarious. He knows it better than you do. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they know when you screw the lyrics up. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> okay, you know, whatever. It's okay. You know, but it's, it but it goes back to the, the thing we were talking about is 30, 40 years ago when we were coming off stage, we were sometimes like we would get into like fist fight. You fucked that up. You fucked it up. Yeah. No, you fucked it up. Now we sit back there. First thing we'll do for the first 10 minutes when we come off stage tomorrow is we'll sit and in a funny, humorous way, we'll kind of go, ha ha, uh -huh. in that song <laughs> when we played, you know, James sang this out or I did the wrong beat or whatever. Now we kind of go, ha ha ha, that was really funny. Did you like uh, my edit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're our songs and as far as we're concerned, we can do with them what we want. Absolutely. We don't, exactly. we don't have to play them perfect. And so now we connect over the fact that we're human and that, you know, so that pressure, our, Fuck, I'm gonna get back in the dressing room and somebody's gonna yell at me. You know, it's like, it's just that human thing and it, it makes you feel safe and it makes you feel that it's all worth it, you know? Uh, Do you, are you any close to working on what was driving that pressure for all those years? Was it, I mean, the most obvious thing is maybe Perfection. fear? Perfection. Some kind of fear. But yeah, Perfectionism. It buried in some level of insecurity. Like, it, like yeah. if, if we're not it perfect, someone might take it, it away. Is insecurity. Yeah. yeah, criticism, insecurity, fear yeah. of being judged. Yeah. Yeah. You name it, there's a whole list right there of yeah, fear and it all, all, in. all falls under the insecurity, you know, umbrella. That doesn't yeah. go away, James, you know. It does those, not. Th those fans, will, there are still those people that will be disappointed with this and love that, and they'll swing like a seesaw at all times. And so, yeah. and same within myself yeah. as well. You know, I have an expectation, I didn't meet it, oh God. And like Lars was talking about earlier, hey, that was great. Like, no, it wasn't, but yeah. the expectations just always get in the way. But you summed it up beautifully before when you said just accepting the fact that you're human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, allowing ourselves to be human. And just having compassion for yourself, you know? Well, the more you do that, you, you, you know, we all have that compassion for other people. Oh. It's easier, you know? It's easier to see that in other people. I also think like having some, some control over your destiny now as well, stepping out with a new album and, and you know, it's really inspiring what, what you're doing as, a, as an organization. If I think of you like a sports team, like, you know, you, you're running a great season after season here. You've got your own label. You're doing things independently. Worldwide number one album on your own label. It's like fucking awesome. Slight disappointing in Lithuania, but you haven't played since 2010, so you might want to get back to Lithuania. Um, everywhere else, number one. Um, pressing, pressing our own records. No. Now you're in the pressing plant business. Thank God someone else showed up to Jack White's party, right? If you take a step back and go, and I think a lot about this as, as we're going in through the the promotion of this and talking about the 72 seasons and every day people that tell me about your first 72 season. Right. And I still go back to who the fuck would have thought that when James and I got together in LA 41 years ago, we'd be sitting here being at, you know, Johan Cruyff stadium, home of where Ajax plays yeah. and the, you know, and having a conversation about this crazy, outsider thrash metal band that yeah. never fit in anywhere buying a fucking vinyl plant it's, what I know. who would have thought you know if you said that 40 years ago if you said it 30 years ago yeah it's like yeah we just finished injustice for all and in 2023 you'll be back in europe you'll be doing a a, a tour of s football stadiums you'll still be you know putting out records that you know uh, somewhat relevant etc 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 and you're buying <laughs> fucking you know vinyl so plants and relevant. you know you know, know. <laughs> yeah, but, you know it's you know <laughs> it still blows my mind at least right now maybe it's the post covid as we spent two years uh, wondering what our future look was going to look like and whether we would ever get back to anything that resembled whatever normal was before that when we were out going around Europe last year, we played 15 festivals in Europe last year and a few in America. Just being out again and connecting with audiences and seeing the European cities, having them feel like alive again. I've never seen so many fucking people on the streets of Madrid. The whole city was alive. Yeah. And there was a, a post-pandemic 
spirit in the yeah. air of just um, of celebrating life, celebrating you know what the 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 opportunities could be again out of that uh, that misery and despair and the uncertainty of lockdown. And I think for me, sitting here and being with these guys. Mm. Uh, having this record in our back pockets, sitting here with you, sure. you always get uh, the deepest shit out of us, uh, which I love, by the way. <laughs> and um, it's just a sense of gratitude oh, and a sense of appreciation same, and same. a sense of, of just love. And, same. and, you know, it's just fucking crazy. Who would have thought? Imagine how I feel. You know, I was the guy who was drawn into your music. Like everybody else is going to be here tomorrow night and every other show. Came into Metallica and was just like, thrown on my back foot in the best possible way. Because oh, there's off balance, right? Axis <laughs> shifted six degrees to the left. I go this direction now. And I've been chasing you my whole fucking life, you know, all over the world. So to be sitting here in a place like this as well, you know, having this conversation and the fact we're all still here, that's what's not lost on me. And I can imagine as this, as this hour comes to an end, that that really is ultimately the great achievement, isn't it? You're still here. Yes, we're still here. We're still feeling like we're contributing to the good side, <laughs> to making it better, you know? Uh, that, well, that is thought about every single day, you know, that, what, you know, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. What is the service we're bringing, you know, at the end of the day? Yeah, I say this is a toy. Yeah, it is just a, it's wood and metal and a bunch of aluminum put together, but with thought and with care and with love and with intent, and yeah, that, that'll go back to whatever it's supposed to be at the end, when this is all done. But what we do with it and how we get to use this tool to connect is what it's all about. Just take a second and just listen to like how quiet it is. It's all so, I hear is... I know. All I hear is... <laughs> 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 okay, and now, same here, same here. Those days may have gone for you and I, right? And now on Apple Music, <laughs> silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's just, I, I just love the anticipation. Mm. I almost want to do like a cut and then do that thing where it's just like the next shot is just ah, chaos, yeah, 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 fucking right. volume, and blood yeah, and guts yeah, yeah. and fucking yeah. sweat and anger and emotion oh, yeah. and all that shit that makes yeah. you guys so yeah. fucking fiery and powerful. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely still feel the calling and it's still the same call that I felt when I was a teenager playing guitar in my room. And I know it, it's got to be similar for the rest of these guys, you know, still feeling hungry, still feeling like there's still music to be made, good intentions to yeah. be fleshed out and brought through our music. I'll tell you, you one know? of the things about this experience and recording, yeah. you know, this album and, and uh, collaborating on this music was uh, just to be in a room together again and to have that like you feel that in the album you feel it in, in in every part every note that's played the segues you know that that can't happen on zoom some of the intro stuff and all that you know the tribal type of stuff you know all that stuff is happening you're hearing it and experiencing it on the record what you're listening to is what happens and what's happened mm. and i think that somebody said in one of the interviews the other day that when they hear this album they see us Mm. like three feet in front of them and that's what they love about it they hear mm. james singing they can almost you know his breath is hitting them not bad breath by the way but you know just the, you know that energy of what <sighs> halitosis, <laughs> halitosis. <laughs> yeah, let me just make that clear that you know but uh but and i just thought that was so amazing to to have somebody say that they feel that in this record because that's something very special. They say, mm -hmm. I see you, I close my eyes and I can see you all in front of me. I love that. And that's because it's the magic of the moment, you know, and that's what happens with this record. Like, damn, that's fucking good. I wish yeah. I thought of that. That's great. Right. <laughs> um, gentlemen, yes. thanks for having us here in, in beautiful Amsterdam. Thank and, you. Um, thanks for coming. Yeah, man. Long may continue. Striking along. See you on the next album, right? See you down the road? Just getting yeah, started. Appreciate you, Zane. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, then. The so. Calm, the calm before the storm. The biggest snake pit you've ever created. <laughs> it's insane. It's the size of most major venues in the it's mainland insane. Europe. Yeah. It's insane. But it's, insane. Uh, it's the privileged spot. Yeah, I mean, the snake pit has been uh, part of what we've been doing for basically 30 years, coming back to the 
going back to the Black Album days. So the Skank Pit, you know, started off um, one of our managers, you know, back in New York in the late 80s, early 90s, the idea that um, when you would go to a restaurant, that the best seat in the restaurant was actually not in the house, mm. but the best seat was in the kitchen. Mm. And um, so in crazy cool restaurants, if you could somehow get into the kitchen and eat in the kitchen, you were in there where all the action was. Yeah. So the idea that came out of that for that Snake Pit on the Black Album tour was basically to be in the middle of the stage. So we had a stage uh, that was shaped like a diamond and there was 30, 40 spots in the middle of that stage. Radio contest, you know, winners, friends, family, a few crazy metalheads from around the audience would end up in that snake pit and they would be on stage with us. And then it morphed. And basically for, uh, I guess, 30 years now, the snake pit has been an integral part of at least a Metallica indoor show. Mm -hmm. And then in the, uh, in the stadiums when we've been playing outside, it's been sort of this extension of the stage. You've seen it, but they've never, They've never been like crazy big. There's been room for a couple of hundred here, a couple of hundred there, yeah. whatever. But it's always uh, someone been, told you know, me it's like a thousand in here. Yeah, we 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 were told between uh, nine hundred to twelve hundred, you know, depending on the density, obviously. And and as you know, when you get into these things um, in different countries, the fire marshal has different, yeah, yeah. you know, and all this. But I mean, it's going to be incredible. We've been in here for a week now, and we've been playing to the silence that you pointed out. Yeah. And you know, this is a big place, uh, and it's a European football stadium. Obviously, it's further to the sides. But when this is populated, not just with all these beautiful souls here on all the sides and on the floor, but when you get in here, in here. and this this space oh, so is full of... Uh, tidy, though, uh, Lars. Uh, i got <laughs> to pay respect to everyone who's put this together. <laughs> This is the most pristine, large-scale <laughs> concert production I've ever seen. This makes you two look sloppy. <laughs> close in, close in on him right now. Get the reaction. Get the reaction. Get the... <laughs> they're I'm Irish. They'll go there. They're Irish. Uh, they'll get it. And um, look at this, bro. I feel like I need to just. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So, 36 hours from now, there'll be be a lot of human. This is uh, fucking. There'll be a lot of, you know, will it be sweat, s spit? I don't know uh, which. Whatever. I don't, I don't know which microphone <laughs> well, I'm supposed to go to. Like, I'm immediately like, do I go to this stage setup? Do I go to this stage setup? Do yeah. I go to this? It's kind, like I said, yeah. it feels like an illusion. Yeah, a few people that have come in the last couple of days, I watch them as they come in and they get they're disoriented. Disoriented? Yeah. yeah. It's like, where do they go? It's just like these towers, and it's just kind of crazy. I mean, to the point where I feel like I'm seeing six drum kits, not four. Like, it's, <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Look what you make, man. This is crazy. Do, do you ever allow yourself the space when you walk into a place like this? I know we were reflecting a little bit before up on the balcony with the fellas, but to really acknowledge just those dirty, unruly, ragged beginnings, you know, where it was like just plug in and fucking yeah, lit rip. Oh, no, it's... Uh... Like I said, certainly uh, for me uh, in the last post pandemic, a lot of self reflection and just way more unreal to me than it's ever been before. We just never used to slow down long enough back in the day to take any of it in. Yeah, yeah. And when you're always looking for the next fix, you're always looking for the next rush, you're always looking for the next thing to satisfy you. Uh, you just don't, you're never in the moment. And now, we are, you and I standing here going, fuck it, look at this thing. It's also the enemy of progress because you're not going to be able to get on a stage like this and feel it the way you are unless you were in that moment, right? You just like, what comes after that show? Yeah, I mean, when I sat up in the bleachers and looked at this thing for two hours yeah. and I said like, what have we created? <laughs> and what's the answer to this next time? You know, where do you go from here? Because, you know, my mind does race quite a bit. And so, you know, maybe the answer next time is to go back and play places, do you know what I mean, where you get this kind of intimacy back. But this is really about the fact that the fans that are here, yeah. as James is walking by, or yeah, James is playing so from a Rob is here, or I'm right here, we can uh, exchange pleasantries <laughs> and all the rest it of it. So it, it is close. really about the intimacy of it. This and there's no is, barricade No, in here. this yeah. is there's no. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, if anybody's out there, please don't unplug any of these because all these have a purpose. 
Okay? I mean, so if this, if this blue one is not in there, it could fuck up the whole game. You are gonna block yeah. this off, surely. Is it just gonna sit here like this? <laughs> Maybe there'll be a little it's thing here. I mean, it's, it's, it's got Metallica yeah. on the back. Someone's gonna run out with that, bro. Someone's gonna have a crack like, at it. I don't it. even like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> what the fuck does this do? <laughs> is that like for your Wi Fi? Uh, it's, it's so awesome. It's pretty man. crazy. This is obviously the biggest production that you've ever done. Yes. Hands down. Uh, not even close, yeah. So what was the one before that? Was it hard? Was it worldwide? Well, we've never done in the round in the stadiums. And so we, we've been looking to do in the round um, in the stadiums for probably That's 10, right. 15 yeah, years. We've done in the round in the arenas. arenas. Yeah. Apart from, from here, you know, most stadiums, if you look up, it's yeah. practical because there's no roof yeah. that you can hang anything from. So everything that you're seeing here, you see the eight towers, yeah. everything in here is what's called ground supported. So you see the PA. Yeah and you see all this cabling, yeah. there's nothing of this whole staging that touches the, the, the stadium the roof. roof. So all of this is ground supported and it's always been about how do you set that up without being able to hang anything from the roof. Yeah. And the way our team cracked it was by having these towers. And the one thing that's different because obviously you 2 has played in the stadiums in the round, Garth Brooks has done it. Uh, Ed Sheeran did it last year and will do it uh, in America this year. But the one thing that's different about this setup is there's no center point because all those shows would have a center point. Yes, the center right? point's the pit. And the, so the center point is right there, but you can see all those wires, they're not coming from anywhere other than those towers. So all the weight of the PA and the lights and the shenanigans are all being held up by those eight towers. So that's the crazy thing. This is so nuts. But it's a kind of an engineering marvel. And our team has done a fucking insanely great uh, job of putting this whole insanely thing together. Insanely great. It's, it is geometric design at its highest level. Yes. It's Structure like, and order. Two things you don't associate. With what? With Metallica. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> like, yes, you fucking do. There's no way you can play an 11 minute song at the pace you're playing it without structure and order. It's but been kind of the battle cry in the last week. We go around and say structure, structure and order. order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And symmetry. You know, but see here, we're right in line. See, we're standing right here. Yeah. And it's right 114, 127. And, but this thing is, is right now is booked for two years. It's booked all the way up through the end of 24. I love how you're doing yeah. it as well. Uh -huh. I love how you're like, we can do this and live our lives. We can come in, maximize the amount of people. We can, put, we can entertain, make happy, and then get back to something resembling a life. Yes. And I think it's, if not it's that- It's about those balances, yeah. If yeah. not that, what is the definition of success? If not balance. Those balances also is, sort of what feeds it and what makes it possible because without those balances we wouldn't be able to do it we can go into the craziness of this world but we can't hang out here for more than a couple of weeks at a time yeah. before we need to go back and just connect with our families with our our homes our, our sort of our, our, our safe zones uh, you know our comfort zones at home and so one of the biggest places where we really uh are grateful for the success is that the fact that we have the opportunity to come out here and just do this for say two weeks at a time and then go home. Because if we were to be out here for eight months in a row, now we got to be out here till the end of the year. Yeah. We couldn't do it because no we're, it would, it would just drive us, you know, drive us off, off the ledge, off the cliff, you know. It's, it's going to be a fun place to hang out for the next couple of days. And then we get two weeks off and then we pick it up in, in Paris again. And you get to know France. it and you get to figure yeah. it out and you get to go yeah. and take it all over the world yeah. into these beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. gladiatorial spaces. It's fucking yeah. awesome. It's interesting because I, I've noticed the, the ability when we're making records, you're in the studio, you're fucking in it. You have no perspective because you're so high on the experience and on the day-to-day -day of, of it, it sort of when it connects. But then leaving, that's where you get the perspective. And then you go back to the studio a month later and you go, that doesn't work, that, that, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And it's the same thing here. Mm. You know, when we've played these two shows in Amsterdam, we all fly home on Sunday and then we have two weeks to start to France. And I think the, re the reflective time at home when we come back to Stade de France, we'll go, okay, that needs to be nipped and tugged, that needs to be nipped and tugged, and blah, blah, blah. And then Stade de France will 
be its own thing. And then for Hamburg and Germany, a week after that. You know, so every time you're in the trenches, you get out of the trenches, back to the trenches a week later. So we set this up kind of like Nashville touring. Yeah. Because it's called where we just play on the weekends. Yeah. So it's not like we're here, you know, Thursday and Saturday and somewhere else, Monday and yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, you get excited whatever. about it every exactly. single time. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like we should have a good luck hug, given Come that on. we're right in the center of the entire space. Hold on. Good luck tomorrow, Come on. Man. I'm so happy that you're here. Same. I'm so happy your whole team is here. Same. Thanks for joining and coming over and being a it. part of this. Uh, Oh, this, uh, it feels special, This opening man. moment. Yes, this opening moment. Come on. All right, then. Dude, you got Bono on the edge on their fucking heels with this one. 